Greetings fellow tank commanders, in this video I'm going to be showing you a game that I played in the Super Conqueror. This is a tier 10 British heavy tank armed with a 120mm cannon. The game I'm playing is an encounter battle on Barovanka with 12 tier 10s on my team, 13 on the enemy team. Tier 9 was skipped here and so there's just a few tier 8s and one artillery on each team. For this game, my tank is equipped with a gun rammer, vertical stabilizer, and improved ventilation. And I'm using a British crew which has 13 crew skills and perks. I've gone over to the encounter base where my team has a heavy presence. The enemy has done the opposite and is pushing along the 9-0 line. I was just about to get aggressive here when that Death Star pulled out. Lucky for me, my IS-7 teammate ended up taking the hit. Not so lucky for him though. Once he shot though, I gave the attack signal, and my teammates were thinking the same thing as me. Get that Death Star out of the way before you can reload and give another monster hit. It's so important not to let a full flank get held up by one scary tank. I've only played a couple games with the Super Conqueror so far. My first couple games were quite bad because I was expecting too much from the Tier 10, when really the Super Conqueror's game style doesn't change from the Tier 9. Things are just slightly enhanced to make its game style a little more reliable and effective. So once I went back to the more passive damage support role that the Conqueror plays, I started having some good games. That's what I get for not researching the tank properly ahead of time. There's been good work by all my teammates on this flank, and we managed to clean up this flank without too much trouble. Unfortunately, the enemy has made more progress than us coming around the other side, and my team is quickly falling behind and losing map control. The main offensive difference between the Conqueror and the Super Conqueror is the shorter reload time giving you just over an extra shot per minute. This improvement isn't always noticeable, but when you get into an intense firefight or have an enemy stuck out in the open, you can rack up damage extremely fast. My Waffentrager off E100 teammate is signaling he's on the reload so I move forward to try to block him, but I'm too far out of position and the enemy has way too many tanks to allow that. This dead tank provides me some great cover here. With so many enemies from different directions I decide to leave the one behind me for my teammates to deal with. Unfortunately, they looked right past me and at my teammate, so it didn't work out nearly as well as I hoped. Even though I'm getting absolutely shredded by the enemy here, my hit points are holding out long enough for me to get several shots in, and I get some nice damage hits during that time. When I pushed forward to that location, I didn't expect the enemy to take us out so fast, but I didn't realize that we had three of our remaining tanks out in the field fighting the Super Conqueror. So if we were going to win that particular engagement, we would have needed all the firepower. But understandably, my teammates were playing to their tank strengths. My team's at a bit of a disadvantage here, but we have very mobile tanks with good firepower, which does give them quite a bit of potential. Let's see what they can do. Our bat chat managed to snipe the Chinese heavy tank, which I wore down to quite low hit points. Wow, my tier 8 light tank teammate managed to take out the E100, yet another target that I managed to bring down to low hit points. So even though I wasn't able to finish those two enemies off, it managed to bring their hit points down low enough that my teammates can finish them off with a shot or two. 
Of course, I am just looking for excuses to take credit for their success. I was very interested to watch the tier 10 mercenary light tank, the Tusk. I haven't seen a lot of them in battle, so it provided some nice end game entertainment for me. Now this was a very unnecessary risk by my Tusk teammate. The Tusk is going in unsupported when he's an easy one shot. It would have been much safer to wait for my bat chat teammate support. It ends up working out well because he got the kill, but I felt it was an unnecessary risk to take in such a close game. Overall, great work from my teammates there to win that game. Now let's check the post game stats and see how I did. For this game I earned 20,000 silver without any multipliers and 11,880 experience with a 4x multiplier from the string theory op and 500 from another op. In this game I dealt 6,872 damage, assisted with 6 damage and destroyed 2 enemies while blocking 2,270 damage. This earned me high caliber, mastery badge ace tanker and a confederate medal. I placed at the top of my team, earning a base XP of 1,517. I managed to hit 20 of my 21 shots and penetrate 16 of those. In terms of crew and module damage, I destroyed the fuel tank in the 103B, damaged the turret and injured the loader in the tusk, damaged the fuel tank in the E100, and damaged the ammo rack in the M48 Patton. Well that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed seeing that game with the Super Conqueror. It definitely wasn't the most outrageous game, but we got to see a nice showcase of the increased damage potential this tank has to offer, and in a very short time I was only alive for 5 minutes, shooting at mostly tier 10 targets. Stay tuned for more awesome World of Tanks videos.